we want to let you know that it, the world that we uh, the world that we live in um, is have some will have at times some very serious um, static ramifications. Most of the ramifications or the consequences you have going down a, a good journey will not come from the government against you. It's more likely going to come from people who claim to be righteous, um, yet they may not be. In other words, they're, um, they're spending more of a time scrutinizing information that we're putting out you see in a video such as this, then spending the time actually to figure out how to examine the information and see whether it's true and then go ahead and apply it to prove either way, whether it's true or false. The purpose of these videos is actually to put things into application, to do them, to actually show uh, that we do have works of faith. Now, when we're dealing with words, there, there is a very, very simplistic understanding of uh, our Christian name meaning love because it came from God. Uniquely, the word, the surname runs the money or the legal side of things because nothing legal would go forward without that name being there. That's like the surety for the legal side. Therefore, by using it, you become surety for it. You went from as surety to in surety. So, if you really looked at the word Christian name being love, that's what it is, and that's belief, and leaf means love, L-I-E-F. So to be love, or your Christian name, because we always speak of our very closest uh, friends or our loved ones as our beloved, and we usually aren't formalistic on it using their surname when we talk that way. So you would say your beloved wife, Sarah, or your beloved husband, Joseph. These are just very, very simple ways to understand what we're about to talk about. So when you have your beloved name, your grace name from Christ on one side, and then you have no separation under the other side, being the surname, which represents money, it would seem to imply that's love and money together. And we know that's not scriptural because we know you can't serve God and money or mammon. If we look at the word prophet, which people seem to not have a problem with that word, but when we're talking about the world of value, prophet synonyms mean advancement, benefit, gain, earnings, interest, different than rest, proceeds, Receipts, return, revenue, surplus, takings, value, winnings, yield, use. The opposite, of course, to this profit would be loss. Uniquely in scripture, it said you'd have to lose your life in order to gain it. I could feel that the surname almost represents an ego or a pride somehow. Pride of ownership. Because you're not going to own anything without it. At least in the illusion of the fiction. The word profit, as a verb, gain, contribute, to reap. Now we know a man will reap what he sows. The surname means debtor. So if you sow that surname, you will reap nothing more than debt. What is the worldwide deficit at currently? I think you want to go look at that clock dealing with the U.S. debt and see what the status of that is right now. It's not looking very, very favorable. But that is nothing more than debt. So if people are sowing debt, wouldn't it be an insurmountable amount that's been accumulated? If everybody's using a debtor name, wouldn't that do anything more than accumulate debt? If they were using a name that doesn't have debt with it, would they be accumulating debt? These are very, very simplistic questions to try to get the answers of from within. 
and then do your own research to find out where you place in that spectrum. If we look at the word profitable, the word lucrative comes in there, expedient, serviceable, valuable, commercial. Now, if someone's in the world of profit, we usually call them a profiteer. Uniquely, the word profiteer in synonyms has the following words, exploiter, extortionist, racketeer, shakedown artist. Profiteer is a verb, exploit, extort, fleece, make a quick killing, overcharge. They say that the surname is over and above the Christian name would probably would very simply mean over and above what's required. A surplus. It's not required to have it. Profiteering, usury, highway robbery, extortion, exploitation, racketeering. Racket, babble, clamor, disturbance, fuss, noise, outcry, tumult, uproar. You know, the minute that you say that surname, you've disturbed the peace of your Christian name. A Christian can only be in the world of civil, civilly dead. Because he cannot be civilly active, because that would imply that he's involved in money and the militia that could be called to arms at any moment. It's quite saddening that there are Christian groups, especially in the southern U.S., who believe they have the right to bear arms and kill their fellow man to protect what they believe to be property ownership. Where would you ever find Christ in the Bible telling someone to kill their fellow man to defend a piece of land? I thought, from what I read in Scripture, he was there telling us to turn the other cheek. Blessed are the peacemakers, not those that have war. You can't even own a gun without filling out an application that would bear a surname because that's the right to bear arms. Grace is not a right. Grace is basically a gift. It's a favor. God gave us favor with that name. If we've done something opposite to that, then we've gone into disfavor. So to go in from assurance of God into insurance was based on our own consent to contract into something that would extinguish that inalienable right into a lienable position because now they would never see anything other than your leaned name being the one with arms. And therefore you'd be treated like a beast as what would be the symbolization of the surname or the arms or the coat of arms because they all have animal symbolization in them. I hope I'm not raining on people's parade in their pride world. We hope that we're here for proper correction. It is only correct and simply correct to have a given name. But using something that's incorrect and thinking that we can live with that without having the consequences attached to it would be just simply deceiving ourselves as is stated in Galatians 6 and 3 if a man thinks he is something when he is nothing or no thing he deceiveth his mind and the thing that is in question in the world of Caesar has to only do with the title that belongs to Caesar your Christian name belonging to Christ is unquestionable therefore you will never be questioned but if you give the surname it is questionable that you have authority over that because that would only be a colorable right or claim you're making. You have no proof. You may look at it as the world of fiction says that X is Y and cannot be disproved. But disproof is not what we use in a court of law. We only use proof in a court of law. So therefore, it'd be silly for me to debate how to disprove something that's an error. You cannot prove the validity to the error. There is no validity to it. Therefore, there is no proof. A fiction is nothing more than a made-up lie. And if you 
make believe or pretend to be involved in the tender or the legal tender, then you'll be treated as nothing more than that. And if that is what you're identifying your life to be is nothing to do with anything more than this seeking of money, mammon, tender, well, then you'll be doing a lot of contracting and having a lot of contractions in vain, which requires a lot of labor. The journey that Christ talked about was burden-free. Surprising the word last, belonging to the last name, in law means burden. And therefore the burden of proof is always upon you upon using it. And there's a fee attached for the use of those things that have that requirement attached to them. So you cannot escape it by, the, by using it. It'll always haunt you. It'll always come after you because you cannot discharge that duty with the use of it without following the required rules that go with it. So the videos that we're trying to do here are based on going ahead on the truth from God's word. And the closest I can feel at this point is that it is a complete separation, which would require an abandonment of what would be unclean, which is what a Gentile or a Gentile name would be, a complete separation, abandonment of it, a forsaking of it, and then a removal of what is been graced you because it is going to be held as collateral as long as you use it together with the other name because the other side has the right to hold it as collateral based on the fact that you're using their property and therefore the consent of that requires you to extinguish at that moment your individual graced position with Christ. And therefore you're placing yourself as collateral and surety for something and therefore you're walking in surety. And we know the scripture does not support that because no sinful man can be surety for another. Therefore he who is surety for another will surely smart for to be injured. Therefore you will go in jury because you are doing perjury, because it is not your true name, it is not your real name. The next video will be things that I feel would be good communications with the higher powers of government to stay respectful as a peacemaker representing themselves as an ambassador for Christ.